Hey, it's Pat K, and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're gonna be talking about this one thing, one technique, this one setting in Lightroom that is so, so powerful, but so many people aren't using it. So many photographers aren't using this in their editing workflow, and I think that's a shame. So that's what we're gonna be covering in this video. Now, I don't really know why people don't use it, Maybe it's because it has a scary name or maybe because it takes a long time to master or it's kind of confusing at first, I don't know. But if you spend the time to learn it, to understand it, and then to really start mastering it, I promise you that your photography game, your editing game specifically, will be changed forever. Like this is speaking from personal experience. When I first learned this technique years and years and years ago, it changed my workflow and I haven't looked back since I've always been incorporating it into my images. So the technique that I'm talking about specifically is calibration. So calibration is a little panel that sits at the very bottom of the sidebar of the develop module in Lightroom. And if you're serious about building a visual aesthetic, starting to build a visual style, getting really, really good at understanding editing and photography in general, then this little panel that belongs to the bottom of the sidebar, you'll probably have to move it up near the top because you'll be using it that much because it'll change the game and the way that you edit that much that it, you know, you'll need to use it all the time. Okay, so let's just dive into what calibration actually is from a technical level, right? Because you can just jump into Lightroom and move the sliders around and see what happens all on your own, right? But to really understand and master this tool to get the best out of it, we need to understand exactly what's going on under the hood, right? Because just the effect of you moving the sliders isn't enough. So the calibration tool can be explained with kind of like an analogy, I guess. So you know when people talk about color science? Like, oh, Canon's skin tones are just amazing. Or, oh, Sony's colors are so true to life. Or, ah, oh, this Fuji sky just pops. So all of these comments are like the end result of color science, right? But it's way more beneficial for us to understand what is actually going on here. You see, color science is simply the interpretation of color by the manufacturer, right? It's a given set of values that the manufacturer, the camera manufacturer, decides on and then shows to you, the viewer. See, every single pixel is made up of red, green, and blue. Now, that's all well and good, right? Red, green, and blue make up the colors, but stop and think for just one second. Who decides what blue really looks like? What shade of blue is really defined as blue, right? Or when we're talking about red, how red is red, right? Is it more orangey red? Is it more magenta red? Who decides these things and what do they look like, right? How do we just simply call red, green, and blue three different colors and you know the exact mix of red, green, and blue that they might have? And if one camera manufacturer calls blue X color, whatever that might be, and another cameo manufacturer calls blue X color, are these two colors the same? Usually no, they're not. They're completely different, right? So when people say that they like X manufacturer's skin tones or X manufacturer's skies or the look from X camera, whatever the case may be, right? And they're talking about like the colors. What they're actually referring to is the mix of RGB for every single one of the registered colors, right? What it essentially is, is like a package of, you know, colors that are presented to you as truth from that particular manufacturer. That's what's happening every single time you press the shutter. You are essentially baking the camera's manufacturer's opinion on what their colors will be, AKA their color science. The calibration tool then is something in Lightroom, a tool in Lightroom that we can use to change the individual red, green, and blue values of the entire image so that we can start to shape and to mold something that's away from the manufacturer's recommendation, something that you know could be a little bit more fitting towards like our lighting conditions, or it could even be way more fitting towards our stylistic desires and the aesthetic that we're trying to go for. So let's see this in action and let's jump into Lightroom. Okay, so here's a color wheel, right? 
And just to cement the point, if you see over on the histogram here, if I hover over every single one of these colors, each of these has like a different mix of red, green, and blue within them. So coming into the camera calibration panel right here, which we have up here. The first thing I wanted to cover is these three primary sliders, right? These red, green, and blue sliders. So looking down here on the bottom left, we have a red circle, right? We have three circles, red, green, and blue. Now, if I drag this first slider over to the right, over to the more orange section of the image, watch what happens to the circle. It gets more orange, right? Fancy that. But the interesting thing here is not only did this orange circle turn orange, the rest of the color wheel changed color as well. Now, why is that? So when we're pushing this slider, right, we're saying to Lightroom, hey, red is now more like orange, right? And remember, every single one of these colors has some mix of red, green, and blue within them. And changing this is a global change, right? It changes every single pixel in the entire image. But because red, right, is part of the red, green, and blue mix, and every single pixel has red, green, and blue, that means that every single color will change to some degree. Some more obvious than others, but we'll go into that in a little bit more detail in a moment. Now, just to further the example, if we move this slider to the left towards the more magenta side, we see that not only has the red circle changed, but again, the rest of the color wheel has changed as well. And this is an interesting phenomenon, right? Because by changing just the red mix within each pixel, it gives us this like completely different look, which is super, super powerful, right? Especially when we start to combine it with the other primaries here as well. So let's see what happens, right? If we take the green primary slider and we slide it to more teal, we see that the green moves a little bit more to the teal, but also everything starts to look a little bit more flat, which is interesting, uh, and even a little bit pastel -y. Moving it to the yellow, everything gets a little bit more saturated and goes a little bit yellow as well, which is also kind of interesting. The next thing we'll do is the blue primary. If we move this more towards the purple, we see that the blue is completely changed into purple and the hues have also completely eradicated any blue out of the picture. Now, a really common technique that people use calibration for is this like blue or teal and orange look. And we can achieve this by moving the blue primary towards the more teal side, such that we have you know, a bigger range of tealy, bluey colors and contrasted with a bigger range of you know, warmer orange and red and yellow colors. Okay, so just to reset, now you might at this point say, well, can't you just do these changes in like the hue sliders right below it, right? Well, let's find out. So if we take the orange slider and we move orange to yellow, we see that it only affects this portion of the color wheel, right? Conversely, if we change the orange to more red, again, it only affects what was in the orange slices in the color wheel originally, right? And this is the same case with blue, right? Green, whatever the case may be. And we can even try and like mimic the calibration settings that we had before, but we'll never get to the same level as like what we originally had with, you know, the teal and the orange look, for example. You see, the thing is, hue and calibration are completely different things. Again, calibration is global, right? It affects the entire image, whereas hue even saturation and luminance, they are somewhat local, right? They only affect the ranges that are laid out within them, right? So yellow only affects all the yellow, specifically yellow portions of the image, right? And that's it. So it's very important to learn the differences between these two things, because once we, we master these settings, we can start to do some really creative and cool things with them. Okay, so now that we have a good understanding of the differences between the calibration tool and the hue tool, we can start to dig into what are the use cases that we might be using you know, camera calibration for. 
So in Lightroom, I've got three images up right now that are going to be examples that you might want to use camera calibration for. So this first example, now I've only just put some very basic exposure changes to this particular image just so that you don't have to look at a, you know, <laughs> a bad image. Um, but with this image, right, it's shot at night. It's shot under all this artificial lighting. And so there's a lot of like yellow color cast going on, right? So with this, you might be tempted to say, okay, how can I get rid of the, the yellow? Maybe I can just whack the saturation down a little bit. And that might do the job. And, you know, it, it might be okay, maybe halfway. But you see, the thing is we start to lose detail of the things that are supposed to be orange or supposed to be yellow instead of actually correcting it to what it should be, right? The actual correction that it could be. And so if we were to use calibration instead for this, right? What we could do here is say the green primary, we can shift that across to more green and instantly we've gotten rid of a lot of that color cast, right? But we can push it even further and say, uh, let's move this blue primary across just a little bit. And then this red primary, maybe just to the right a smidge, right? And you can see what effect this is having. We can also turn down the two saturation values so that more of the green mix is in the, the overall color palette. And now we've got a really good correction. And so now if we turn this on and off as an example, we can see that we've gotten rid of this yellow color cast whilst also retaining the things that are supposed to be the correct colors. So I could have actually done a lot less just to get rid of the color cast, but in this example, I just wanted to show you a little bit more tweaking just to see you know, the power that you could actually have out of this tool. But this is like the kind of first use case you might use calibration for because when you're shooting in different conditions and different lighting and different times, there are going to be prevalent hues that are in the image that your camera just might not be able to pick up. And you might want to have a different kind of cast over your image, whether that's for stylistic reasons or aesthetic reasons, or you know, trying to stay true to life, right? Okay, in this next example, we've got a shot here from Singapore. It's the Cloud Forest. And there's a whole bunch of greens here, right? So this can be a very interesting shot creatively to start to get you know, the colors working, right? So what we could do, hypothetically speaking, this may or may not be the thing that you're trying to go for, but you know, this is a demonstration of what this tool could actually do, right? In this mountain, we have a whole bunch of green. We also have a whole bunch of yellows and that kind of hue of color, right? What if the goal was to align all of these colors together such that the mountain is just one big green blob. <laughs> that might look cool for you. You know, it might not, but let's just try and do it anyway, right? So again, let's take this green primary and we can slide it to the right. And immediately we can see that the, the yellow is just, it, it's, it's just fading straight away, right? So again, before and after, straight away. Pretty neat, huh? Okay, that's good, but let's push it just a little bit further, right? Let's get a little bit more stylistic with uh, the edit that we're trying to go for here. So if we go down to the blue primary slider and we move it to the right, shifting it to more purple tends to give kind of everything a little bit less luminance, a little bit less brightness to the colors, right? So if we shift this across just like that, we can start to see that not only are the colors getting more rich and lush, right? But the kind of yellow tones are getting dulled down and getting smooshed into a, a green. Now from there, obviously the side effect of doing that is that all of these purple areas up the top in the sky are purple, right? And obviously the sky isn't purple. So one thing we can do to counteract that is we can go into our hues and we can say, hey, purples are actually blue, right? And you know, because purples are, <laughs> well, the sky is blue in this instance, right? But suddenly what we have here is a image that is vastly different to how it started life out as. We can even take this even further and like if you wanted to, you know, dull down the greens, we could push the luminance down a little bit on both the yellows and on the greens. 
take the saturation down to make it just a little bit more like natural and true to life. And there you go. It's just one big green mound now. And again, this might not be what you're going for, but this is just expressing the, the power of what calibration can do for you. Now, one example I wanted to show you was this one. So in this example, I'm gonna show you more of like how I've been styling my images for, I don't know, the past like three years or so, where I try to go for not a teal and orange look, but more of like a, like a cobalt blue slash orangey kind of feel, right? So this shot is done in uh, Seoul. Uh, it's a bookstore. So all of these books, we can see a whole bunch of different colors, right? So what I would typically do for my edits in this instance is to try and you know homogenize all of these colors together to either blue or to orange or yellowish, whatever it might be. So where I'll start with this is always blue primary to the left towards more teal, right? And I'll zoom out just to give you guys a little bit more of a, uh, a look. And then red primary towards more of an orange, but not too much. And then green primary, usually towards more of a teal, right? So what's happening here is that the greens are moving more towards the blue, right? And then we're kind of reducing the amount of yellows in the scene altogether. Uh, and then even of the reds that are in that, we're pushing that towards more of a, a orangey yellow hue, right? So that's what's going on, right? So in this instance, we can just adjust the saturation to our taste because saturation is just literally just saturation, how intense the colors might be. Uh, in this instance, I might move the green primary just down a little bit. Uh, I might up the blues just a tad. And then, you know, that's it. If we zoom in here, we can see that a lot of these colors are homogenized to orange and blue. And if we turn off the calibration, we can see we've got purples, we've got greens, uh, we've got dark purples, we've got like really bright yellows, you know, all of these different colors. But turning on the calibration, we've kind of homogenized all of them together. And for me, that's the direction that I'm trying to go in because using the calibration tool to kind of unite colors together, especially if you're doing contrasting colors is a really cool idea. So whether that's like the classic teal and orange, or it might be like dark blue and red, or it might be like green and you know purpley pink, you know, whatever it might be, that's a really cool technique you might want to start to inject into your editing aesthetic. And that's it. Now, camera calibration is one of those things that takes so, so long to learn and so long to master that I would highly suggest that you start trying to learn it right now because, you know, using that in combination with hues over time and then learning what luminous does as well is a really, really good way to start to really master color. And mastering color is one of those things in Lightroom that really, really changes the way that your entire photography starts to look. So I, I really highly recommend that you try and master this, uh, this calibration tool. If you have any questions, of course, leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to, to get to them. But uh, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button, subscribe to see some more. Also check me out on Instagram, on Patreon and on Discord to join the community. I'll see you in the next video, but until then, go out there and make something that matters. Peace.